My boy passion fans, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey Adam G. So let's finally talk about the my final MGI hot picks for this year. The preliminary competition already took place last night, so it's time for us to roll our sleeves, so to speak, and guess who will be Isabel Menin's successor this coming Wednesday. And to be honest, guys, no doubt the camera work, the production values are as usual top notch. But to be honest, guys, I really find it very interesting to watch because most of the heavy favorites i feel for the title underperformed last night which really surprised me at all except for colombia none of the perceived front runners were really serving extra and grand on stage which i really find very odd and even how the girls introduced themselves was less controversial and screechy compared to the previous edition so it was definitely new for me but you know what? Along the way, I got to figure out the answer to this question I have in some of my commentary for my top picks. So, I will be listing down my top 12 picks based on everything that I have seen from day one. So, if my final ranking of the girls do not eventually match the final outcome on Wednesday, then so be it. It's okay. I am just happy to share my list coming from my heart. And if you think I'm biased, then so be it too. I don't, I don't even know what the pageant owner is thinking, so I am just here second-guessing the girls he thinks could elevate his pageant system at the moment. Alright, so here we go. Let's start off with Canada's Yulia Sherban. You know what? Oh my god, where did this girl come from? I was totally stunned and mesmerized by this woman's performance last night. Her execution of her gown performance was flawless and I could not, I could not really nitpick about everything because that face is just really hauntingly beautiful and beguiling. Na talagang just wow. Na, alam mo yun, she just walked fluidly without those exaggerated movements on stage and that fit and toned body that she displayed on swim, on the other hand, was a knockout. I couldn't say anything more I hope, except that I hope she does well in the competition. And now we go to my 11th spot and I'm giving it to Angola's Eugenia Neves. What a show opener this beautiful African woman is. When it comes to runway performances, nobody could dispute her in this segment of the competition. Napansin ko talaga ang galing galing niya talaga dito since, since uh, the sashing ceremony. The confidence that she just displays on stage is just amazing because she's really overflowing with it. She was snappy and confident in her swim but knew how to downplay it to showcase her elegance for the evening gown competition at the same time. Her black gown is just giving me Wakanda feels. I really want her to place in the top 10 at the very least because she truly deserves her spot. But if I have to say something, I just find it weird that she's the, op she's the show opener considering that um, Albania is supposed to be ahead of her because alphabet because Albania comes before her alphabetically so I just find it weird and now we go to my 10th spot and I'm giving it to Netherlands Melissa Botema I have been keeping an eye on Melissa Botema since her show-stopping performance during the sashing ceremony and she keeps on delivering no, nobody can really argue with me that she really has one of the best catwalks in the competition. She's very consistent on this one. That red, that red orange gown really looks good on her. However, if I were to nitpick, her makeup was too dark in the competition. Actually, most of the girls were. So I hope she could apply her own makeup so she could highlight her strong facial features during finals night and probably go higher than my ranking for her here in this list. And now we go to my ninth spot and I'm giving it to Myanmar's Nini Linyan. You know what? Another girl who has been wowing me since the beginning and she just keeps on delivering to what I just love about Myanmar is the beauty of her face. It is really serving the true blue Asian look and I love how she has been complementing it with her show-stopping looks one after the other she really did well during the prelims in my opinion although i noticed 
there was some sort of hesitation or ambivalence when she was walking during the evening gown segment. And if it's true that Myanmar is, hold, is hosting the pageant next year, then all the more she has to be in this list. The pageant owner always keeps highlighting the four Bs for his pageant and Nini or her country could give him the business or money he wants. But removing that from the equation, Nini deserves to be in everyone's top 10 list. She is really a cons because she is really a consistent performer all throughout. And now we go to my 8th spot and I'm giving it to Vietnam's Le Hoang Pong. Of course, host delegate has to be here. She has been holding her own against the heavy favorites for the crown to the, le to the delight of her audience. You can see, you can really feel the hard work that she has displayed all throughout from the sashing ceremony to the to that stunning national costume to prelims last night and i thought she really had a huge moment in that very beautiful gold gown now i thought she was perfectly styled there and as a host delegate she really did the best that she could and as a token for how her country has treated this pageant system for quite some time now lavishly then a top 10 finish is definitely well accorded and now we go to my 7th spot and I'm giving it to Dominican Republic's Carsi Marie. For some reason, I was expecting more from her since she has the momentum going for her after she fell the hardest during the outdoor swimsuit competition. After that, all eyes have been on her, diba? However, I really didn't feel her wow presence last night. Don't get me wrong, guys. She is very beautiful, but I could really sense that she was quite nervous. And probably was overthinking with her every move, which was heavily reflected on her evening gown performance. She really didn't give me that wow moment I was expecting from her. Her walk was beautiful, but she wasn't just connecting to the camera. And the poses that she did on her evening gown weren't that solid. In swim, she did okay too. But there's just no, I didn't really feel the wow factor. Hence, this is the reason why I am ranking her low on my list. But who knows, she could turn it around come coronation night. And now we go to my sixth spot and I'm giving it to USA Stephanie Miranda. She has been my presumptive Miss Grand International title holder from the beginning. And I love how she is living up to the hype. It is such a joy. It is really such a joy to see her perform on stage and let the whole world lap it all up. Her extra moves really fire up her catwalk performances in all segments and I really, really like it. She is really breathing grand in every aspect. Com skills wise naman, she has proven her smarts in the preliminary interview. However, I know, don't. the only reason why I am only putting her in my number 6 position is not of her own doing. I feel she lacked the last B that this pageant owner has, which is business. Yes, she has her own monetized YouTube channel, but you have to think what she has to offer to the pageant owner in terms of business. I'm sorry if I am already including this business aspect, and I know it is very unfair, but that's reality. But who knows? I could be wrong again. As you know, USA has hosted Miss Gun International before, but... Among all the girls um, that is heavily favored to win, you really also have to take into consideration the business or this as the business aspect of what a certain candidate could bring to the table. Now, the pageant owner loves to highlight that last 4B and this is what I feel is missing or lacking from Stephanie, but it's not her fault. It's really not her fault. And now we go to my top 5 and my and number 5 on my list here is Indonesia's Ritasha Wellgreat. Ritasha will definitely continue her country's winning streak in this pageant system. I am just truly amazed at how she has made this competition a showcase of her amazing transformation since her national crowning moment. You could really feel that there was no stone left unturned for this lady in terms of preparation because she's one of the best styled girls all throughout and has been a consistent performer from the beginning. I always love her every time she performs. She is sassy and those snappy turns during the swim segment, wow, I really love it. However, when it came to her gown performance, this is, I, I feel, where there was a missing element. There was no spark in that 
uh, performance as I feel she got overwhelmed. Maybe it's how heavy that dress was so she wasn't able to walk fluidly and did not project much confidence. But regardless guys, she will still be up there because she has proven to be a well-rounded candidate too. She sings too! Nagahanap yata ng singer itong pageant owner natin this year for a winner so she fits the bill too but plus the fact that the pageant owner has a solid huge following in her country so I see Indonesia doing well again this year. And now we go to my fourth spot and I'm giving it to our very own Nikki Demura. No doubt that face card never declines. Every time I look at her face, despite how simple her walk is, it's still enough for me to put Nikki on this list. I know I have been so critical during my previous content about her, but I now get, get her game plan. I really get it now. But before that, let me just comment how she looks so impeccably well put together during the evening gown segment. I thought she was serving real... She was serving Barbie realness in that vision of pink. Rian Fernandez trumpet gown with a deep neckline and sheer overskirt. Now, it was just a very exquisite gown as, as the color was really striking. Now, it made her look, and for the first time ever, it made her look tall, lean, and very youthful. And in a sea of green and gold gowns, she really became memorable because of this. It really complemented well with a stage background. And that chiffon cape truly added the drama that we wanted but it didn't at the same time it didn't look like a costume so she really looked amazing now let's go to her styling naman guys i thought styling wise she was on point i actually wasn't looking at her dress anymore as that face was just enough to wow me and i was still smiling all throughout when she was performing in this segment maybe it helped that she finally projected the look that i've always wanted for her compre limbs her big, authentic hair was really roaring lioness. And what I love about her hair here is that it was not overpowering her frame, but still luscious enough to have that impact on stage. Now, pwede mo compare na talagang very Beyonce Renaissance story and refreshing to just see a blonde Filipina delicate. But guys, not only was her hair standing out, but also her glam in this gown. Her glam here was very striking as her stylist focused heavily on the eyes, napansin nyo, while being contoured to perfection with emphasis on neutral tones and glossy lips. Hence, she looked very current and still looking youthful. Na, meron talagang winning glow tayo nakikita kay Nikki that night. And there is no doubt that Nikki held her own against the other favorites during the competition. Now, now let's go talk about her swim performance naman. I really like her walk here, but I know it still lacked the extra movements, antics, twirls, and transitions to make it Miss Grand. Objectively speaking, I felt she could have done more with her final pose in this segment. Kasi parang may kulang. Pero siguro at the same time, guys, I realize hindi na natin talaga pwede pilitin si Nikki mag-perform na exaggerated movements just to please us, her audience. Kasi masyado na tayong nasanay siguro sa mga pasabog performances ng tatlong Samantas natin during the previous years. That we keep hammering on for being, that we keep hammering her for being deficient on this aspect. But I really feel as I think now, maybe Nikki and her team are having a different or out-of-the-box approach or game plan for this. And it's obvious that she is sticking to it. And I now get why. Yes, MGA platform may be giving all the girls a platform to showcase their extra movement on stage, but it does not necessarily guarantee a win. I say this because if you notice, the winners in the previous editions, especially in the last two years, were not showing too much exaggeration on stage. Vietnam played her smarts to her advantage when she learned how to speak Thai for her Q&A while last year's Brazil, Isabel Menin just let her face do the talking the whole time last year. And if we apply this to Nikki's case now, she could really have a shot in winning the crown because that face is just hauntingly talagang beautiful. And I remember what my fellow pageant media friends told me when they all saw the top 10 girls visited our country, visited Manila last year, that they were really stunned at how physically beautiful all the top 10 girls were. Of course, I wasn't able to see them because I chose not to cover them out of protest for the pageant's owners, you know, 
numerous antics all the time. But deep inside, talaga guys, I really want Nikki to win because she has that commercial face which could bring business to the pageant owner. I know the pageant owner does not enjoy a huge support from our country, but if he will only think outside the box and let our let our country win for the first time ever, it could really turn around things for him. Remember, at only 19, Nikki has been figuring in a lot of TV commercials, not just here in the Philippines, but around Asia as well. In fact, I heard she even has a billboard somewhere in Thailand, and I don't know if the pageant owner is aware of this or realizing it right now. But getting our attention by winning our first ever golden crown could spell big business for him. We could be even be a candidate to be a host country for him in a future edition, given Pastor ALV's aggressive moves as a businessman or a national director. But again, we could always argue that the pageant owner will never let us win and Nikki could only make it to top 10 or 20 because of her lackluster performance all throughout. Again, we can only confirm what he is thinking about Nikki on Wednesday. But even if the pageant owner decides not to crown her, I really feel it's still a win-win situation for Nikki. She could really use this experience for her to make a pageant comeback in the near future when she gets older. So manalo matalo, I really won't get affected or too heartbroken for Nikki. Because, diba? Let's see. Kasi, alam naman natin na binigay naman... Nikki is doing her best and she has been ende endearing herself to the pageant organization and I really feel she is also one of those favorites that the pageant organization likes. And now we go to my top three and I'm giving it to Czech Republic, Sofia Masako. I have been so enamored by this girl's youth and charm since this competition started and she is succeeding. And I just love how Sofia has been showcasing her real authentic self in the competition. But honestly, the reason why I love her so much is when she showed us that she could speak different languages. And I was really floored when she spoke in Japanese at one point of the competition. Now she is really cute. I really find her very cute. Never mind if her catwalk needs more improvement. And never mind too if her evening gown performance was so reminiscent of Miss Thailand's performance during her nationals. But I feel she is still a force to reckon with in the pageant. Kasi if you will realize and think about it, she also has a very commercial face. And if the owner is thinking of crowning a European for a change this year, then she could be the first one to win from that continent. Because that face, talaga, guys, is very marketable. And the pageant owner could easily exploit her numerous talent here in Asia. Now, she could even, you know, she could even use her to gain more business opportunities in Japan. Given there are rumors online, it could be held there. So, I see so much potential in Czech Republic. Let's see if the pageant owner and I are, are on the same page about her on Wednesday night. And now we go to my runner-up of this edition and I'm giving it to surprise, Colombia's Maria Alejandra Lopez. Given everything this lady has shown in the entire competition, I really believe she has what it takes to win her country's first ever golden crown. From arrival dinner to prelims last night, she has always made her presence felt in the competition. Now she really wants to win the crown so bad and it's so obvious the way how she does. She has been doing everything just to gain the attention of the pageant owner and I really do, do not mind at all. Her prelims performance was the biggest pasabog the, the show la, of the show last night. And no, I have, and I feel no one came close to her. That hat effect may have been done by Gabi Bashano in the past, but it's still work on her. It's winner vibes for me. Although I just wish she could have opted for a slate hair or a bun. So the hat effect with that hat effect because it looks so her because her hair really looked messy afterwards and at this point she has done everything that she could to win but why do i sense that the pageant owner might not give it to her because i really feel she is too geeky to win and i don't know if it if it could 
really backfire on her in the end because the last two winners that this pageant owner crowned were beautiful and effortless in their own right without without what Colombia has been doing all along this year so but who knows I am wrong but I'll be so happy if Colombia wins because she really deserves it I just hope the pageant owner will also give it to her if she really deserves to win if she really performs if she will really perform to the best of her abilities on Wednesday night and finally we go to my decide winner for this year and I'm giving it to Peru's Luciana Firsterg I was quite disappointed because I feel she underperformed during the preliminary competition for some reason I was also expecting a lot from her I wasn't really wowed with her multicolored gown and I thought she did okay with her swim performance However, I still feel Peru's Luciana Firsterk has what it takes to win the competition this year. And if I am applying the Nikki argument on her case right now, she is effortlessly beautiful and doesn't draw too much attention on herself to be noticed. Now, she is just doing it right without too much exaggeration, even if she also has the capacity to do that. And what I also love about her is that she's very down-to-earth and kind as I follow her more on her social media accounts. And I like that for a winner, sa totoo lang. Maybe it helped that, you know, she is so kind to our very own Nikki as they are together in a, in majority of the activities all the time, which was highlighted when she chose Nikki to be her winner for this year if she wouldn't win during the prelims interview. That was so un unexpected of her. Nagulat ako. But more than that, just like Indonesia, she is a very well-rounded candidate. She could sing too. And plus the fact that she has 4.5 million followers on social media, so the pageant owner could also exploit this opportunity for his pageant to grow further in the Latin America. So, pero sa totoo lang, guys, I really like her a lot. If Nikki won't win, then I would really like Peru to win because she has been very consistent with her showing from the get-go. Now, the only reason why I think she might not win is because her country has won already and I feel the pageant owner is giving every every chance, a fair chance, is giving everybody a fair chance to win because as you can see in the pageant's 11-year history, nobody, no country has ever won this pageant twice. So that's a huge odd or that's a huge that's a lot of odds that she has to overcome but let's see but right now with only one day left i really i'm facing all my bets for peru to win the entire competition this year so there you go guys what do you think about my list as you can see i tried to incorporate the last b as much as i can on every girl here on my list because that's i feel that's the name of the game now in this pageant you gotta offer more something beyond your beauty to excel in this pageant diba i mean you diba i know my list is too beaten and i only listed 12 of them or 12 girls who really impressed me during the pageant this year but let me give some names to that who also impress me i also love venezuela i feel she couldn't she could also get in the top 10. i also like india i really find her very alluring in her sexy gown and she, and she was really serene in her diwati the national costume and then there were also other latina candidates who also stood out like honduras guatemala Costa Rica and yes, Puerto Rico also impressed me. In fact, in Puerto Rico could also be on top two. Thailand could also play side, but there I just feel there are more facially beautiful girls than her. And there are also other girls like Brazil, Belgium, Panama, UK, Nigeria, and even Uzbekistan. So let's see, guys. Let's see if I am thinking what uncle is thinking right now. Magkakaalaman talaga yan on Wednesday night. So, basta guys, let's just manage our expectations for our very own Nikki. If she'll only make it to top 20, then it's okay. Basta ang importante, she'll place. Kaysa, el tekuyo tayo sa pageant na to this year. I really, really pray that she will do well in the, comp in the competition that she'll place as high as she could. Alright guys, until my next video, bye!